Hello friends and welcome back to Stay to Right. In this React series up until now we have covered a lot of things. This is a beginner friendly React series and we have started from the basics where we created a basic React project then we moved on to understanding what components are, how you can style your components and in this video we'll create a small number guessing game using React JS. Yes. So this will be our first basic React project in which we will create a simple number guessing game. Mostly it will be JavaScript code, but yes, the React component will be there and we will be using just a single React component. So most of the code will go into app.js. So let's see what we will be doing. So as you can see on the screen, I have a blank component and the output looks like this. There's nothing, no component has been created. So you cannot see anything on the user interface. So what I will be doing is let me write a couple of comments over here uh, describing what we will be doing in this particular game application so we will have a user input field in which the user can guess a number right then we'll have a button on click of this button we will evaluate verify uh, whether the number guessed is correct or not We also need to generate a random number for the computer side because the user has to, so for example, we will be creating a game in which the user has to guess the correct number between 1 to 10. So we also have to have a mechanism where the computer can generate a random number between 1 to 10, right? So computer will generate a random number between 0 to 10. For this, we will be using math object in JavaScript and use the random function ceiling function. So I will get to that when we write the code for that. And we will have a couple of if else conditions to, you know, verify whether the input is correct or not. And the user will be allowed to get three guesses. Okay, so let's start. So first, let's start with the basic user interface. So what will we have in the user interface is uh, we'll have a basic input field input type let's have input type as number because we just want the user to guess a number i'll give an identification to this input field because we will be fetching the number that the user has guessed in the input field using the id attribute of the input fields right so let's say user guess and let's add a placeholder to please guess a number okay so now we have an input field. Let's create a button to. We have this button over here. Verify. Okay, if I save this, how's the UI looking? This is how the UI is looking. So if you have seen my previous video in this series, I showed you guys that how you can add simple CSS to style your different components. So the CSS is still there. In the app.css, I still have styling for basic, you know, input field and button. That's why you are seeing the output over there as styled. So there's a basic styling that is added. I will also recommend you to go check out the event handling video because in this particular uh, video, I will be using event handling as well. So when the button is clicked, we want the user input to be picked up. So if the user enters over here, let's say seven. Now, if I click on this verify button right now, nothing is happening when I want to you know capture the value that is provided by the user over here when the verify button is clicked and then only we can verify whether the user input is correct or not right so that code will come over here inside our functional component app so we'll write the code over here but let's just first put over here on click attribute and uh, i will be creating a function let's say evaluate number or evaluate guess right so this is the function that I'll be creating. So let's create the function over here. Const evaluate guess is equal to. I'm creating an arrow function. Uh, it's not necessary that you create an arrow function. You can create an anonymous function too. I've been talking about this since quite some time now. If you have seen my previous video. So this is how. This is also a function. But this is an anonymous function. I can also create a simple function like this. The traditional functions in JavaScript if you don't want to get confused. So this is also valid, right? But let's, you know, because we should be following the modern ways. So let's have a arrow function over here. Okay. So this function will not have any input parameter will directly fetch the value from the uh, user input field, right? 
So how we can do that? We can simply have this, we can create a length. Uh, first, let me get the reference to this input field and then I can get the value using the value property. So you should know JavaScript before moving on to React. Uh, highly recommended, right? So I'll just say user input element, el for element. And I'll use the document object, get element by id function. And I'll provide this id attribute value over here. Now I have the reference for the user input field, right? And to get the user input value, user input val, what I can do is I can use this element and use the value property to get the value for this particular. Just to see if this is working fine or not, let's just, you know, console.log and check whether we are getting this value or not, right? So we have this input field. If I verify this, so as you can see, we're getting seven over here. So this part is done, right? So the user input that the user is putting in when we create, when we click on the verify button, we are getting the value in the console. So we are able to capture the value. So that part is done. So now we have a function which is triggered when the verify button is clicked. And inside of that function, we are able to successfully get the value that the user is inputting as well. So now it's time to write the basic logic of the game. So as I've mentioned over here that the user will be allowed just the three guesses. So to keep a track of these guesses, what I can do is I can create a counter over here and initialize it with zero. So every time when a user is clicking on the verify button, what I'll do is I'll increment it. If the user is entering a wrong input value, and when the value will be greater than three, we will verify, we'll check whether the value is greater than three or not. And if it is greater than three, then we'll show user the message that, okay, the number of guesses has been exhausted and the game is over, right? So the first thing that we should be doing when the user enters into the evaluate guess is, what we should be doing is, let me just show you guys. So in this, the first thing that we'll do is, we'll check whether the counter is less than three or not, because that should be the first thing, right? If the counter is less than three, then only we should proceed with the evaluation part. Otherwise, we should just say, okay, game over. Correct? And once we know that, okay, the counter is still less than three, so the user still has chance to, you know, uh, guess the number. So then we'll do this. We'll check uh, the value that the user has input. And over here, we'll put in the if else condition to verify whether the user has guessed the correct number or not. So. Another thing that we should be doing before we move on is we should have the number that the computer will be guessing. So how do we do that? So let's just say computer in number, right? And I'll be using, like I said, so I'll be using the math object and the random function. So when we use this math.random, this gives us a number between zero to one. So if you want to try it out, you can just simply use this math.random and do console.log. You'll see that, okay, you will get numbers like this, 4, 5, this, 0 0.5, 2, 0 0.6, 7, etc. So every time you uh, run this, you will get a number between 0 to 1. So in order to use this function to get a number between 1 to 10 on any given range, so what we will be doing is we can multiply this with 10. So now if the number is between, let's say, 0 to 1, so let's say the number guessed is 0 0.22. So if I multiply it with 10, I get 2.2, right? Similarly, if the number guessed is 0 0.657, so when I multiply it with 10, I get 6.5, right? So I'm getting a number, and the maximum it can guess is 0 0.99, let's say. So when this is multiplied by 10, I get 9.9. .9. So when I multiply this with 10, I'm getting a number between the range of 0 to 9.9999 something, right? So what I can do is I can use another math object function, which is math.c. I can enclose this inside of this. Now this will always give me a number between, and I can show you guys as well, console.log. Let's just put in computer number over there. So this logic is basically, you know, basic JavaScript logic. You can ignore this as well. Uh, if you want to try it out, you should definitely try it out. But this is the part of where, you know, we are writing the logic for the game. Uh, not React part, but yes, JS part. So let's just quickly see if I refresh it. So as you can see, you are getting number 5, 4. If I refresh it, you are getting 10, 3. So why is this coming twice? Because we are running in strict mode. So when we run in strict mode, what happens is React uh, runs or analyzes the board twice. So that's why you're seeing the output twice. No worries, you don't have to worry about that. So let's just remove this. Now we know that, okay, you know, the computer num is getting a 
random number between 1 to 10 and we have a counter set for 0. When the user clicks on this verify button, the execution will come inside the evaluate guess function. In this, we will do this. Counter is less than 3 or let's say is greater than 3. Then we show an alert message. So I will not change anything in the user interface or the messages I'll be using alert. From the next video onwards, I'll show you how you can refresh the user interface and then we'll start using the UI components to show messages dynamically. Right. Sorry. Chances over the end. Okay. And we will return from this function. So this part is ready. We have a check in place where we are checking whether the counter or whether the number of cases are exhausted or not. If yes, then we return showing a message. If this is not the case, then we move on. We get the reference to the input element. We get the value for the user input and we use basic if condition. Let's say user input value is equal to equal to the computer number. If this is true, then we say alert who correct guess you won and we again return from this else what we do is we tell the user sorry incorrect guests and try again okay and what we'll do is we'll increase the counter we we'll do counter plus plus so now this looks fine to me, but we have to verify whether things are working fine or not. Here I have to use this. So what we have done is the logic is very simple. We have created a basic input field. We have a button on click of which we trigger our evaluate guess function. Before the function, we have set a counter to zero. We are also getting a random number for the computer that the user has to guess. Inside the evaluate guess function, we are checking whether the number of guesses are exhausted or not because the user gets just three guess. So we are checking whether the counter is greater than three or let's say because the first will be zero, I think greater than or equal to three. Uh, because it will come for zero, then it will be one, then it will be two, I think that will be uh, three guesses. So if it's greater than or equal to three, then we should say chances over the end and we should return out of the game. And uh, if that's not the case, we are getting the reference to this input field using the ID attribute, document not get element by ID. Then we are using the value attribute to fetch the value. And then we are basically doing the uh, if else check to verify whether the input is correct or not. So let's see if the game is working fine or not. So I'm getting sorry, incorrect guess, try again. Okay, this is not clearing out. So we should clear this out. Five, sorry, input. Incorrect. I think it would be very difficult for us to check, uh, you know, whether, sorry, chances over being, and I think I got four chances. So that is something that we'll have to fix. So we are getting three chances only because at the, uh, obviously when we click on this, it will trigger this function and then, you know, it will say, okay, the chances are over. It is not evaluating. So one thing that we should be doing is, uh, as you can see over here, if I am guessing a number, when I click on verify, I click on OK, then this still stays. So I should be clearing this out so that it becomes easier for the user to input next value. So what I can do is when this alert is shown, I can do this over here. Uh, this user input dot value and I can change it to blank. Okay, so this will remove the previous value from the input field and yeah i think that should be fine so if i say five verify sorry incorrect value okay this didn't go away what happened okay so i put it in the wrong if condition i have to put it over here sorry so if i refresh it i get five when if i Woohoo, correct guess. Okay, so we were able to make the correct guess in the first we go. If I say 7, verify, sorry, incorrect. Okay, the value is removed. 5, verify, sorry, incorrect. Okay, the value is removed. And, sorry, incorrect. Right. So if I get any other value, I get sorry, chances over payment. So this is a very basic game that I have created over here. We should also 
episode yeah now there's so many other things that you can do on top of this you can have a good user interface you can style this user interface right have a basic heading over here let's say a uh, number guessing came so that it has a user interface you can also add a background over here you can add flex properties and get you know create a small box to show this right because it's unnecessary taking up the entire width and you can also have a restart button where you can reset the counter and restart the game so there's so many things that you can do so this video was just to you know showcase you how you can write you know basic simple applications now this was just a basic example moving on i'll be covering more complex applications like a to-do application or we'll be hitting third-party apis to get weather information and we'll do a lot of other stuff as well we'll also move on to you know so here you know in the user interface we have not done a lot of things right but we will be moving on to learning about conditional rendering, uh, learning about how you can use state to, you know, control the user interface and show dynamic uh, components in the UI. So all that thing we will be doing. But for now, as a beginner, I think this is a good start. We have written entire code in JavaScript and a single component application we have created. And yeah, this is a good way to start in practice. Uh, you can also create several other forms, bases, uh, this particular game and, you know, keep practicing with the React. In the next video, I'll be talking about how you can do conditional rendering and then we'll move on to, you know, how you can explore different data structures like list, etc. And then use state and other complex React features we will be talking about. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, do subscribe to the channel. I know uh, this video is a little late, but I was suffering from dengue, so I could not shoot videos. In the meantime, it has been almost a week, but now I've recovered and you should expect again, you know, daily videos on React series. Please share your comments in the comment section below if you have any confusion and yes, see you in the next video.